Uh, welcome, everyone. I'd like to introduce you to um, our guest today. It's Lori Rush. Um, she is the president and consultant at Rush Recruiting in HR and has been doing this for many years. And we're going to talk about mastering the art of interviewing today. Um, and I am Carla Rockhold with the um, Oregon State University Alumni Association, and I am the director of career engagement. And so one of the things that I love doing is helping our alumni be better prepared for the world of work. Uh, and so this is a really important topic that we're going to talk about today, uh, all about interviewing. And so we're going to uh, introduce you to Lori, and Lori's going to give us uh, a little bit of background um, about what she's done, like the year she graduated, if she wants to share, and yeah. what she majored in and what she's been doing since uh, she graduated from OSU, and then get into her tips and strategies for preparing for a great interview. Thank you, Lori, for being with us here today. Great. Thanks, Carla. Nice to be here. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm an alum from a long time ago, College of Business and a marketing and accounting degree. I've uh, been involved with um, the Alumni Association and helping alumni. I've helped with mock interviews, career fairs, et cetera. And I think this is a, um, and I've had my business for years. I started out in corporate America in HR and recruiting. And so I've just carried it down to, we work with a lot of different businesses and um, and, and the, the important part is interviewing. That's where you're, that's where you're, that's where the hook comes. Chances are, and so I'm going to go ahead and start talking about some of the keys and stuff, but, um, the biggest thing is preparing and practice for this interview. It is the most important thing. And the one thing that I tell people is, is this is a, this is a dress rehearsal. So how you prepare and conduct yourself in this interview is how you're going to approach your job. So they're looking at how prepared you are, how practiced you are, how much you know, and how much you're focused on the end, the end inside, or the end, sorry, the end, the end, the end <laughs> getting, getting that job, job. getting, getting that, that job. job. How's that? Yeah. <laughs> and then the one thing that I think a lot of people realize is um, when you're invited to an in-person interview, chances are you can probably do the job. So what they're looking for is, do I like this person? Do they fit in our culture? And do they have the passion and the drive to get the job done? And can they solve our problems? It's not what you want. It's what you can do for them. Great. That's so important to know. So really understanding your why, why you're there and why you can be a benefit to this company or organization that you're applying to. So that's and why should they should select you for the <laughs> Why they should select you ultimately. That's yeah. perfect. <laughs> so. That's great advice. I love that. So do you want me to go to the, the slide? Okay. Um, well, why don't let's let, let me talk a little bit about more about preparation. Great. Excellent. Um, yeah. The biggest thing that you need to do is don't just assume because you know how to do the job. You just walk in there. You need to take some time. And I, I, this, I've said this word so many times. You need to prepare and you need to practice and you need to practice out loud multiple times. And the biggest thing is trying to anticipate the questions they're going to ask. Um, and, and sometimes focus on if there's, there's certain, there, everyone has questions. They're a little anxious if they get asked this question, make sure you have that answer nailed down. Um, and I think that you can probably, if you write things down and then you say them out loud, you're going to remember them and they're going to be in your language. It's not going to sound practiced. And that's what I think a lot of people do is they write down their answers. They maybe say it out loud or just write it down. And then it sounds practiced. You want to sound like this is coming from the heart because they want to see the genuine you. Um, and so I think that um, you, you can probably do that. And a lot of them are behavioral interviewing. Um, that's what everyone uses. And that's basically a past performance is an indicator of future performance. So the objective is, is for you to share your successes that illustrates that you can solve their problems. Uh, and you need to do it by your accomplishment and your experiences. And I think a lot of people, um, when they're and it's it's always tell me about a time when. Can you give me an example of when did you do this? Sometimes they say, how would you handle this situation? And I think a lot of it is you need to say you need to talk about a specific example, and you need to drill it down. And see, this is why you need to write it down and out loud multiple times is the situation or the problem, the task at hand, and then what you took for actions. And you can even say my team or I led my team and then the results. And you need to deliver it that in 
under three minutes, probably two minutes, but you need to have that really succinct. And I think a lot of people get caught up in the, the actions and forget about the result. And what they're looking for is, so, so what, you know, you did this, but so what, how did it help the, how did it help the organization? Um, and the biggest thing that I can say in these types of questions is never say never, I always try to, or I make sure I, because you, you've just diluted your answer. Um, you want to say, I did this. When faced with this, I did this. So you know, want to use the actionable things. And I think a lot of people, when they get nervous and are not practiced, start rambling, and then they start saying some of these things that you really should avoid. That's great. What are some strategies that you um, help people with in the, your past that have helped people not to ramble? What are some things that you... Uh, have told people to do that are good tips for that? Um, one of the biggest one is to be enough, have enough confidence in your answers and that you're prepared, that you are comfortable with silence. That is probably the biggest thing because it exudes confidence and that you're sure that you're sure of what you, what you can do for them and, and that what you've presented to them. Um, I think the biggest, the biggest thing is when people get nervous, they start rambling. So be comfortable with silence and practice being silent. If you're done with the question, say, is there anything I can answer about this? My answer, do you have any questions about my answer? Or just sit there and look at them like, okay, next question. So mm -hmm. that's, that's kind of a good thing because without saying it, you're exuding confidence and confidence is the biggest thing is I, I'm the person for this position and you should hire me. So what do we, what do you um, suggest for people that say, I just am not, I'm not a confident person. And I, I feel so intimidated when I go into interviews. Is there some trip tricks and tips that you give somebody to build their confidence before going into an interview? Um, and I'm going to keep going back to this practice out loud. Yeah. Anticipate practice out loud, be prepared. Mm -hmm. You can't do it enough. Um, uh, video yourself. Take yourself, have a friend or someone that you respect come in and, and role play with them. So, mm -hmm. and, and there's, and you, you have to know that there's going to be something that you haven't prepared for, but you've prepared for so much that if this one comes about, you're going to have the wits to be able to handle that because you know about all these other answers that you're going to give. And a lot of times, if you have a question that's, you know, sometimes tell me about yourself or tell me your strengths and weaknesses. If you've practiced that one, you you may be asked something different that you can use that answer for. So, you know, and, and I think another thing is if people get needed um, a, a security blanket, it's okay to write notes down to remind you of these answers. In fact, it's it's better for you to walk in with some, with either not a laptop because you're cutting yourself off from the person, but maybe an iPad, or if you want to do the handwriting mm -hmm. um, and have a typewritten reminder thing. These are the questions I'm going to ask. These, these are these are like reminders of my 10 stories. If they say, tell me about yourself, these are the three points I'm going to make sure I get across. And then be sure to take notes too, because it shows them that you're engaged and you're trying to find out more about their company and the position. Yeah, that's great. I, I always suggest um, to people when I'm helping them get ready for interviews, like to take like an, a nice folder in with them that has a copy of their resume and maybe they've highlighted or circled key things that they want to um, comment on um, during the interview. Always have their typed up questions that they plan to ask toward the end of the interview of the employer um, and then to be taking notes um, for sure. And like, if you're doing an interview on Zoom, you can have little sticky notes all around the computer <laughs> screen and behind the computer screen um, and so forth so that it can trigger your memory to remember key things that you wanna say um, throughout the interview. I think that's that's a great point. And I was gonna say that, I usually say that when people are having a phone interview or when a Zoom interview, it's an open book test. You can have everything out there. You know, if they ask this question, this is my answer and have it, you know, even have places along the side where you can kind of look to it or it maybe looks at your think you're thinking of the answer. You mm -hmm. know, that's another thing too. And, oh, I just thought of something else about um, is to um, want a key. And this can sometimes help you when you're nervous or you get hypervent. A lot of people get really nervous until yeah. they get into, into it. Don't be afraid to pause before you answer. Mm -hmm. You know, if you start feeling oh my gosh, I don't know how I'm going to answer this. Um, pause for a minute or two. Even if you know the answer, sometimes pausing, that exudes confidence as well. And if it's a, a question that totally is off, you hadn't even planned for this one, or this one was, you're going to have to think of the answer. 
you can even say, that's a really good question. Can we come back to that? Instead of trying to ramble to come up with an answer. And sometimes when that happens, you say things that you may be regretting that you say, <laughs> if you go <laughs> off on, you know, sometimes if you go down a rabbit hole. So anyway, that, I just, I wanted to throw that in because that's one of those things that I think is really important. So yeah, another trick I tell people is have a bottle of water handy and like take a sip. So, oh, I'm just take a sip of water. And that way you can like, buy yourself some time to collect your thoughts too. If you're kind of like getting anxious and nervous about answering that's, questions. That's a great one too. And then also the other thing it's on your, when you've got your, your folder, or you've got, have your place to take notes, make a note of this question so that you mm -hmm. go back and say, you go back and take, take charge and say, okay, I want to answer this question instead of hoping that they'll forget to ask, ask it. <laughs> so anyway, Excellent. I have a, um, I was going to, going to ask, uh, uh, there's some, there's a slide if you go to the sample questions to ask. Okay. Sample questions to ask. There you go. Yeah. So there's a couple, there's a couple of things that when people, one of the, the no-nos or one of the things that, that you can do that's going to totally derail your interview is not having questions. That is, if you say, oh, you've answered everything is, is not acceptable. Mm -hmm. So what I suggest is have about 10 questions written out. Um, so that you can answer them. And chances are some of those are going to get answered doing, during the interview. So you have to have some unique ones and have to have some that you can go to. So if you ask, if you write 10 questions out, maybe four or five of them are already answered. So you've got to have more. Um, but it's a lot of it is, I know people always ask about the culture or the spirit, but sometimes have asking the interview how they would explain it versus mm -hmm. tell me about the culture. Tell, make it about get personal with that person. Tell them about what do they like about working here? What what's kept them here? Um, and then the other one is um, you want to know what um, I think a lot of people ask the top strengths, but a lot of it is what are the top priorities? What are the issues this person's going to have to deal with right away? So that you're drilling down to, to find more out about this position so you can hit the ground running. So, but, but do, and it, sometimes why is this position open can give you some insight on it. You know, is it a brand new position? Is it, um, if, you know, if, if, and they can't say everything, but maybe this person got promoted. So maybe this is a position that you can be promoted to. So there's a lot of other ways, a lot of things you can find out. It sounds like a pretty simple question, but you can sometimes find out information really easy by asking that question. Exactly. If they find, if they say, well, our department's expanding and we need to hire more individuals, that's a great sign. Or if, well, we keep losing a lot of people in this role, that's an important thing to know too. Abs absolutely. Absolutely. And then um, I, the other thing is if sometimes there's, I have some of this, I have a few slides, um, keys to success and do's and don'ts. Um, maybe go to the do's and don'ts. And I, but I wanted to talk a little bit about questions is yeah. you know, be, be um, with questions. Um, if, first of all, be, be, um, cognizant of the time. And that may be, I have a keys to success and a do's and don'ts, but oh, we'll be cognizant of the time of the interviewer and um, know that, you know, if they say it's going to be an hour long interview, if you get to that hour and there's five minutes left, um, you know, that you want to be respectful of their time, but you do have some questions that you'd like to ask. Um, if they're, if they're rambling on and it's getting to that hour part, let them be the ones to take it over the hour don't just automatically assume they're going to have that extra time. So again, it shows respect um, mm -hmm. for their time. And um, that's the big thing. So may ask that. And if they don't ask you to have, if you have any questions, make sure you ask them to ask questions. I have a few questions here. I'd like to find out more about the company and the position. And then when that's it, when you're running out of time, have, have ahead of time the priority questions. So star those questions that you know you want to ask them. And I don't, I wouldn't just ask one. One is not enough. Have more. And another question I always um, tell people to ask um, is like, what are the next steps in the hiring process? Because it's nothing's worse than leaving the interview and somebody says, well, when are you going to hear from them? Oh, I don't know. So I know. Yeah. <laughs> so it's really good to ask them. So what are the next steps in the hiring process? And I always say couch it in. Like, I've really enjoyed meeting all of you today. And, and after speaking with you, I'm really excited about this position. What are the next steps in the hiring process? And I've had I've had people that I've asked that question and they're all worried because they didn't hear back in, in a week or two. Well, they're going to make the decision in a month, you know, so then mm -hmm. you, it's it's all this worry and angst for nothing. The other question that sometimes people are real, a little uncomfortable in asking, this is part of the closing the interview, selling yourself. 
Mm -hmm. um, is what questions do you have about my fit for the position? So you're kind of closing the question closing the interview, and they may be saying, well, you know, this this position requires a lot of, of customer facing, and I don't see that you have a lot of that, and I'm, we're concerned about that. So then you can overcome objections in person versus mm -hmm. when they get together, well, I'm not sure this person has this much experience or enough of this much experience. So, and if you don't, and I like your Carla, you don't say can't or don't or what, or I don't know. But just say, you know, although it appears, uh, uh, let me tell you about the experience I've had with such and such. Mm -hmm. Or the other thing is if it's something you don't know at all, and it's like a nice to have for the position, tell them how, give them an example of how you didn't know something in your previous, how to do something in your previous job, and what you did to get yourself up to speed, and how quickly you got up to speed. So you're showing it by an example, of, instead of saying, I know I can learn this fast, and I can get up to speed quickly, give an example. So, you know, again, that's another anticipation, and you have that answer ready for them. Right. And, and especially for students, perhaps that are um, or recent grads that haven't had a lot of experience, they can even discuss something like maybe they were involved. They were in a leadership role at the university or in a club or organization. Um, they can talk about that and how, you know, I was in this leadership position and I didn't know how to do something. But this is the steps that I did to develop those skill sets. So I'm very confident that I can do this in this role as well. That's that's perfect. And the other thing is, if you it, it, just use a group, a group in one of your classes, if it was a group exactly. project, use the dynamics of your group. And that could even be something for a success of how you took the lead in a group situation because this, it was going one way and you took it another way. There's a lot of things as a, you know, when you're a, rec a recent grad or soon to grad to graduate, don't be afraid to use your experiences in the classroom. Exactly. Very that, can e that can equate. Um, that can kind of equate to how they'd handle themselves at their job. Right, definitely. So I always encourage like if there's any sort of, even if you were a volunteer in an organization, you never know where those um, those tangible skills are going to come from. <laughs> well, and that's the other thing that I always, um, always encourage uh, my people that I've worked with is on their resume to put down your volunteer and customer and, and community service. Mm -hmm. There are so many companies that that is really important to them. And I have an, an example of people that I've worked with that they were the, they were the final, they didn't want to put their, all their volunteering because it's just something that they do, but mm -hmm. uh, it tells about the character too. And I have a, a, a one specific example where they were down to two people and they took my client because he had, volunteer experience you utilizing his skills to help others and he ended up getting the position because they that was there I call it just a little tiny things that it's not so little but it does make a huge difference it really does it does yeah excellent and out yeah so um oh. keys to success was there anything else you wanted to highlight here um, yeah, it, uh, that keys to success. Let's look at that. Um, learning the, the company language. So the part mm -hmm. of this is in your, in your, um, preparing and practicing, but use, and the most common one is customer versus client. If they use in, in their, uh, in their website and their job description uses client, 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 and then you use customer, they may not realize it, but it's going to hit them. You know, it's going to be like, Ooh, that's, we don't say that. Or right. those, the two biggest ones are customer versus client. Um, and global versus international. So, you know, read their, read the job description, go to their website, speak their language. Um, the other one is um, on the keys to success. It, and this is, this not, I wish more people would do this is send thank you notes to all the interviewers, find their contact information out and send them a thing, excuse me, send them a thank you note which is, you know, and it could be people say, well, what kind of a thank you note? Well, sometimes it just depends, you know, who's your interviewer? What's the company culture? You know, is it is it at a high tech company? Maybe just an email would work. Um, don't do, I, I would suggest not doing a text, but I would do definitely do an email or the handwritten ones. It's amazing. Um, it, sometimes it seems old fashioned, but a lot of people don't do it. So that's something that's going to make you stand out when they're making the decision. And sometimes have it all ready to go and yeah. just mail it, you know, when you walk out of the building, I don't know, you know, sometimes there's Zoom or whatever, but get it in the mail as soon as that interview is over. So they get it the next day or two. Exactly. I talked to a lot of young alums and they're like, oh, do I really need to send a thank you note? And I said, if you want to stand out amongst your competition, yes, please send a thank you note. Yeah, That's no, really no. Yeah. Oh, gosh, no. 
that that is that there's again it's those little things and it seems oh that's so little but it's not you know it because it makes anything that's going to make you stand out with all the other people that interview because chances are everybody's going to practice and prepare mm -hmm. to some extent everyone is well you should everyone should <laughs> but you know depending on how you practiced how you present it and these little things that make a big difference um i think is i think is really going to is really going to make you be the difference and them choose you I, the one other thing I wanted to talk about on the do's and don'ts, if you could go to that slide, yeah, the very bottom one is be prepared to talk about failures. And sometimes it's used differently. Sometimes people don't want to say failure. Sometimes they'll say something didn't go the way it should have gone, or you planned it, it didn't work this way. Um, it's okay to, it, you know, showing awareness that something didn't go as planned is it, is better than saying, oh, I've never had any failures. That, that's probably the, one of the worst things you can do. Have a couple of those prepared to talk about. But the huge thing is what you learned, what you learned from it, how carrying something forward, going forward, I learned blah, 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 blah. And sometimes if, if you can, depending on how long your career is spanned, you could bring something from early in your career that you did this and it didn't turn out. And these are the looking back and how I, I analyzed what I could have done better. And so going forward, I've been doing this. But I think that that shows awareness and that you people want somebody that's real, that's willing to admit they did. They, they it wasn't perfect and they have done something. You, you don't learn if you don't make mistakes. Right. So, you know, but being, but again, when you're practiced and prepared and you come across confident, it's like this person really learns from things that don't go their way. Excellent. I love that. Yes. Everyone <laughs> should be able to speak to at least one or two failures that they've had. And again, if it, maybe it's not in a work situation, maybe it was in a class assignment or a class project or volunteering or being, you know, a leader in an organization, um, there's always something we learn. <laughs> if we're engaging with other people, we're learning something. Yeah. <laughs> have failures. Well, I know, I know, I know. So, the, but it's, but it's being able to admit that to someone with confidence again. So, exactly. and I, the other thing that I was looking on the do's and don'ts is um, it, kind of observe at the very beginning, kind of the room and the person and their demeanor and their body language. Are they, and this will kind of tell you what type of an interview it's going to be too. If they are, are you know, very good posture sitting there with a with things written out in front of them and they shake your hand and sit down and start asking questions, that's going to be a direct person that's not going to want to talk about the weather and that's not going to want to talk about the picture that's on their wall. Um, so kind of take those cues at the very beginning of the interview and then you mirror their, 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 the way that they're doing it. Because if they're conversational and you start giving them the answers very quickly and not, you know, not, not in a relaxed manner, they're not going to, they're not going to like you. And you don't, you don't want to do what they, you know, I always say you want people to like you, but you got to still be yourself. But again, some of these things that aren't going to put a blockade in front of their opinions of you. Right. Yeah. So mirroring their body language, how they're sitting, how they're, they, their use of eye contact is, can be really helpful. And I think sometimes when people are kind of um, the interviewer is very stoic and very direct and very serious and the interviewee is kind of leaning back in their chair and he doesn't have good posture and is kind of looking around the room, they're going to get turned off within two seconds. And so right. it's going to be really hard for you to win them over in that type of a situation. Great point. Excellent. It doesn't, it doesn't seem fair, but it's human nature. <laughs> I know there, there is a study by a professor at Oregon State University um, that showed that he, um, the interviewer usually makes a judgment call about the person they're interviewing in the first eight seconds. I, I believe that. So it's it, unfortunately, it's true. So, you know, as you're right, the more practice and the more prepared you are and the more insights that you have about things that you can do to kind of amplify your game <laughs> the interviewing game the better off you're going to be yeah and it, the the other thing is don't make it about you make it about them and how exactly. you can help them and you can solve their problems and share your examples on what you've done in the past for other organizations or classes or whatever mm -hmm. that's right great yeah so is there another slide you'd like to review um i think I think we've gone through, is there, the other thing is that, well, let's go to the general interview question. So everybody, you know, 
you, you've probably all been asked the behavioral, tell me about a time when something was difficult for you, mm -hmm. or tell me about a time when you were, um, your professor, you, you got in trouble, you know, you, they, you didn't get along with them. And there's all these different questions and these questions, they're looking for something in these questions. Um, and sometimes the other things I wanted with the behavior before I go through the general is that there's sometimes your answers can be an answer to multiple questions. So mm -hmm. don't, don't think about, I have to have a different answer for every single behavioral yeah. question. If they're ans asking you 10 or 15 of them, you can say, well, that would, again, that would be the time that I did such and such. And then maybe emphasize, you know, what you think they're looking for in that, in that story um, and maybe add something different to it, but, mm -hmm. or add something in addition to it. But again, if you have that down, if you have that so practiced that you're using your own language and you've dropped all the things that in the writing, you know, you write all these things down and then you say them five times, you're going to drop the extraneous words that make it seem practiced. So if you are so practiced, the, then you're going to have the wits to be able to add something else to it. You know, again, that would be the time when such and such. I wouldn't suggest using it more than twice, though, the same, the same answer. That's well, what do you think, Carla? I, I say so, too, unless it's just you know, they throw something at you and go, wow, I know we'd already maybe preface it. I know we've already discussed this scenario and a couple of other my answers, but this really is a great um, point that I can make based on the same situation. That's perfect. That's perfect. Mm -hmm. So I think on the general interview questions that they might ask you, um, again, these answers may be used for something else. And these are some of the more unique ones that uh, I think people have been um you know, oh, wow, I never thought of that before. So in these, again, they may not ask this question, but the answer could be used elsewhere. What types of people do you find it difficult to work with? Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes you can find, if somebody's not practiced, you can really find out something about their, their character or the way they work with people. Mm -hmm. um, what's the biggest misperception people have about you? And this is one of those, mm -hmm. I call them the trap questions. This is one of those, you could say, uh, whatever you think it is. And most people, if they don't, if they haven't practiced this one, they come up with something, but the, the key is, and how you're overcoming that, you know, this is the per misperception that somebody came that, that has that I'm really shy and I don't get engaged with people, but this is how I'm learning. I'm learning to overcome that so that I don't have to over, so that I don't have that misperception and have to really try to get through it. I, I know right away to really, to really work on improving that. Um, and what was the last thing you did to make your job easier? And that's, you know, that's a good opportunity for you to talk about a process procedure where you got people to work together, something new that you introduced to the company and that they are, they're tell they've been using it since you suggested it. Um, and I think that another one is constructive criticism. What constructive criticism have you received in the past that surprised you the most? Mm -hmm. This is another one of those. It could be a perception issue. So mm -hmm. this is another one where you could say, well, this happened. However, or since then, I have been working on improving this. So again, there's a lot of these questions that give you a great opportunity to uh, you know, show that you know, you've learned something and it shows awareness and it also shows what you're doing to improve yourself. Yeah, I love some of these. I haven't uh, haven't seen some of these before in practice interview uh, questions and really, really um, appreciate you including these because I think they do, like especially the biggest misperception people have about you. Um, I think that's important just to have that, you know, a self-awareness because maybe it's not, the question's not worded exactly like that, but there might be some sort of question that you get that tries to draw that out of you. And you could even when it's it's uh, tell me about an example or give me an example of something or how would you handle this? And you could say, well, people m people perceive me as being, you know, really quiet, but actually I'm not. So I've so you're kind of answering the question with answering the question, but it's a different question. But exactly. you're telling them that. But a lot of it is telling them the self awareness that you learn. You're constantly trying to improve. There's these underlying things with these answers. And, and how you're working to improve this underlying thing that they're going to read about you and how you approach yourself and how you approach your work. Exactly. And if somebody feels unsure about maybe, gosh, how would I um, communicate that? You know, there's lots of different self-assessment tests that you can take online. Um, one of my favorite ones is from the makers of Red Bull, which is very unusual, <laughs> but they have um, a, a, a self-assessment test called uh, Wing Finder. 
it's a wing and then finder. And it's excellent. It gives you tons of great insights about what's going to be the best type of boss for you to work for and the best type of work environment. What are your strengths and weaknesses? And just gives you some really great language that you can use in an interview to discuss uh, discuss your personality type. Yeah. And that's, that's, thanks. You reminded me of that is a lot of people say, oh, that's an old fashioned question is tell me about your strengths and weaknesses. Some people do that. Or it's starting to come back now it where is. they're Again, they're trying to get the, the people that are self-aware that know what they need to improve on. I would have answers to that question, have, you know, a couple, three things down for that question, um, even if you don't get it asked. Because again, as Carla had mentioned, you can kind of throw it in to the answer of a question to show them that you know what your strengths are. And you're you're going to be telling them your strengths throughout the whole interview. But the, the weaknesses or things that you need, that you know you need to improve on and things that you're working on improving, et cetera, et cetera. Right. Exactly. Well, that's great. Any other things that we should wrap this up with? Because I want to be mindful of your time and that oh. of the audience. Anything else special we should for sure make sure they do before they leave? <laughs> for um, the interview. <laughs> gosh, I'm trying to, I kind of went the keys to success. You know, I just, I can't, I can't stress enough the prepare and practice and practice out loud and practice out loud. I, I cannot stress that. And to, you know, take, you've got to take some time for this. Cause again, as I said, chances are you can do the job. They're looking for, for you to stand out. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, I just, and, and the other thing to remember is I know this is, you're trying to get hired, but you are gathering information to make an informed decision on whether you want to be a part of this team as well. So it's, it is a two way street, you know, they, they're the ones that are making the decisions, but you can help them with that decision. But you also, there could be some things that you find out that, you know, this just isn't for me and you don't need to get up and leave the interview. I'd go through, <laughs> go through the interview and, and don't, you know, act, you know, don't, don't say, okay, I'm done, yeah. but you know, you don't want to do that because you just never know. But but, you know, if there's some things that kind of put little red flags that you don't know if this will be a good place for you, if there's something they said that the culture, you know, knowing what culture you fit best in, and maybe this isn't the right culture, look at it as a practice interview, you know, exactly. and, and but but then then again, don't be afraid to assess it afterwards. Say, you know, I don't know if this is really the right fit for me. So mm -hmm. it's OK to do that because exactly. not everything's going to be a fit for everybody No. Exactly. Well, thank you again, Lori, for your time you. today. I really appreciate it. And then anyone watching this video, I'm sure Lori would love to hear from you. If you have any questions that Absolutely. you would like to direct to her, you can find her on LinkedIn and message her. And are you on OSU Connections too, Lori? Yes, I am. And she's on OSU Connections. Yay. So <laughs> you can message her directly on OSU Connections um, and get some other advice if you need it. So again, thank you, Lori. Thanks for being a wonderful alum of OSU and go Beavs. Thanks for having me. Go Beavs. Go Beavs. Bye. <laughs>